What's good, y'all? your boy Ross back out again with another video. So I'm gonna check out AEW just potentially ended itself. WWE reactions to AEW CM Punk uh backstage footage and the uh, whole targeting of Triple H by um Will Ospreay on his promo last night on Dynamite and other wrestling related news. This should be very interesting. Obviously, this is a trending topic right now. What AEW Dynamite pulled off last night. A lot of people are saying this is the beginning of the end. Me personally, I don't know if this is the beginning of the end, but it's not looking too good. They're going to have to do something to kind of change their trajectory right now because, you know, the general uh, perception of AEW at this present moment is not looking too good. So we're going to check this out. Appreciate all love support. Let's get right into this one, man. What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at the most controversial episode of AEW Dynamite, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including why AEW just ended itself, why this was not a good idea, yeah. Will Ospreay takes a shot at Triple H, mm -hmm. AEW looks to have regret ever doing this, WWE's reaction backstage, a WWE star still not signed, WWE scaling back sets, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. As always, we won't recap the show, but just look at the good, the bad, and oh boy, the downright, downright ugly. ugly. Oh, yeah. As always, we start with the good as number one, Swerve Strickland and Joe Heat. AEW is doing many things wrong, but not for its build-up for Swerve Strickland vs Samoa Joe. Last night's brawl between Swerve and AEW World Champion turned up the heat in their already sizzling program, adding anticipation for their clash at Dynasty. Mm -hmm. Number two, Jericho Hooks. I definitely did enjoy that. I watched that. I'm, I've been loving what they've do, been doing with Joe and Samoa Joe and, um, and uh, Swerve Strickland. I've been loving what they've been doing with them. I just think they should be, that should be the focus right there. They have something in Samoa Joe and Swerve. Focus more on that instead of everything else. This is a big, big time match, and they have something there. I just feel like they're dropping the ball with that. I mean, they what they did was cool, but I just think if they would have put that more energy into this feud that they got going on, I think it could be even better. So that's just my personal take on it. But I love what they're doing so far, but they need to focus on that. Storyline takes a At least twist. A little bit more. While Jim Ross wasn't around to say it, it looks like business is about to pick up on the ongoing storyline between Hook and Jericho. Jerry Hook may crash on takeoff if things continue like they did this week when a mistake cost Jericho Hook and Shibata after Shibata missed his opponent and leveled the Ocho. Judging from the match's finish, Hook may opt to team with Shibata instead of Jericho, and this could even turn out to be a ploy by one or both wrestlers to embarrass Jericho. Number three, Julia mm. Hart, a beacon of hope. Julia Hart. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I not really not too invested in what they got going on there that's just my personal opinion maybe some of y'all are but i just just haven't really been that invested i haven't really been that invested in what jericho's been doing for a while now actually Hart is a rare beam of light in aew's otherwise bleak women's division Hart's promos and ring work are entertaining and she's must-see television a rarity in both women's division and aew itself Although Julia Hart is too young to be leading AEW's women's division, she continues to show that it's only a matter of time before she does. And an exciting ride. Pentel Zero vs Adam Copeland was an exciting ride that, dare we say, it had AEW fans on the edge of their seats. While Penta is best known for his tag team work, AEW has established him as a viable singles competitor, so this was a match where Penta was presented as a threat, even if fans knew AEW was unlikely to take the title off Copeland so soon. That was a good, what about the bad? It's number one, the whisper bit has to go. What did Trent Beretta whisper to Chris Statlander backstage? Well, who cares? Once again, <laughs> professional wrestling has found a way to take a clever idea, creating suspense by showing a wrestler whispering into another wrestler's ear and run it into the ground by using it over and over again. Number two, AEW. <laughs> I like how he said, but who cares? <laughs> who cares? Don't give a fuck, bro. That's the thing. If you're gonna do something like that, it gotta be a story in a storyline or a feud or a situation that people are already there. They've sunk their teeth into it. They're invested. No one's gonna really care that much if you whisper into someone's ears and no one heard it. If they they're not invested in the characters, they just be like, oh, okay. 
Next. Well, I don't give a fuck. W's Brody King conundrum. A Brody King is apparently ready to take Adam Copeland's TNT Championship. The problem is that while King has all the goods to be a top star, size, look, and in-ring ability, his continued portrayal as one of AEW's many big men jobbers makes it impossible to take him as a threat to Copeland. Number 3. Another Worthless Show Last <laughs> night's show was an example of how AEW can take advantage of a hook. Here, AEW likely hoped it could attract lapsed fans and new fans with the promise of the CM Punk footage and get them in to check out the AEW product. Unfortunately, the majority of last night's show was as disappointing as the punk footage turned out to be. Last night's show was another forgettable edition of Dynamite, and even worse, AEW is so desperate to have you wonder if they booked Dustin Rhodes vs Samoa Joe to capitalize on Cody's recent big win at WrestleMania. That's what I kind of felt like too. When I saw that, I was like, huh, huh. We got Dustin going against Samoa Joe, who's the champion. We just saw Cody damn near go against <laughs> all the Samoans that are in WWE right now. Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Wasn't a bad match, but it was just the timing of it. It felt it felt like, yeah, they, the timing of that, the Rhodes brothers trying to go for the top championship. Yeah, you could, you could tell. <laughs> just a bit. Well, that was the good and the bad. What about the downright oh, ugly? You know it, it backfired badly. AEW did it. The promotion which has been in a downward spiral for the last 18 months finally achieved its version of the finger poke of doom by airing the footage of CM Punk's backstage altercation with Jack Perry at last summer's All In Pay Per View. Airing the footage seemed like a bad idea, but AEW found a way to make it even worse by trying it to turn it into an angle to build up the Bucks vs FTR match at Dynasty. Having the Young Bucks insinuate FTR was behind the Punk Perry incident as a ploy to gain an edge over them at All In was absolutely asinine. Actually, this move was worse than the Finger Poker Doom and seems more like a combination of that and the dreadful decisions that led to David Arquette and Vince Russo becoming WCW champion. <laughs> After this, it's clear that WWE is in a new era while AEW is in a WCW era. What would you guys think of AEW Dynamite last night? Let us know in the comments down below. I saw a lot of people comparing them to WCW. Even Tony Schiavone, they had a clip of Tony Schiavone just looking just down and out um, from back in his WCW days. And then you see a clip from last night after that whole promo segment. Well, not promo segment, but the, the video footage that was released. You can just tell he just looked like just dejected. Like, what the fuck was that? He just looked out of it, which I, under I completely understandable because the, the, why? This does nothing. You essentially bury technically, you bury technically Jack Perry that's still on your roster. You make him look weak as hell. And then the whole situation of you were fearing for your life, that doesn't even look like that would be something you would fear for. You basically turn nothing into something that ended up being nothing, if that makes any sense. That's all I'm saying. Like, this wasn't, this was nothing, to be honest with you. And it just, it put a bad light on a situation. This happened months ago to try to spin it into a storyline. It didn't work. Did not work at all. Now let's move on to the news. Our first story looks at AEW just ended itself. At top of today's news is the fallout from Tony Khan's decision to air the backstage footage from the dust-up between Punk and Jack Perry at last summer's All In Pay-Per-View. In case you missed it, the footage, which has no sound, shows Punk confronting Jack Perry. Punk shoves Perry twice and then takes him down briefly before Punk is separated. No footage was shown to verify or debunk AEW's president Tony Khan's claim that he felt his life was in danger. Dave Meltzer is reporting on some of the fallout from AEW airing the footage saying, I asked around that the basic thing was like, look, it's over and done with this bad chapter in the history of AEW and it's over and no point when he can say whatever he wants, who cares? There was a couple of people who were going like, Adam Page never got to answer back and won't and will never answer back because he doesn't want to be whatever. But most people just like, we're over it. It's not part of our lives. It's not part of our company. Forget about it. Yeah. And discuss what they heard from people in AEW. Now here, as soon as Tony Khan did that, then I started to hear from people. And it was like people who were just really frustrated going like, now it's back. You know, the whole thing is back. And there's this thing that have happened. People have been made to look bad now and they can't answer back. And because you don't want to, you know, it opened up a wound that needed to be closed. They mm -hmm. need to move past this. This doesn't do AEW any good. 
And I mean, if I'm punk, I'm laughing about it. Honestly, I'm laughing about it. Yeah. It's likely this will only give more ammunition. Which he was. Which he was. He laughed about it. He posted on a story of George Bush on like some type of battleship. <laughs> and then on the top of it or something, I don't know if it was a battleship or arena, wherever he was on the top, it said mission accomplished. He didn't care. I think everyone that voiced their opinion back there was like, yeah, let's just kind of move past. Who cares what he says? It doesn't matter. Let's focus on our show. That's what you're supposed to do. But instead, Tony said, nah, this would be good. Why? To get a temporary rating boost. And this rating boost better be something great. Because if it's not, then this was just a waste of fucking time. For the WWE and Punk to level AEW in the media, the WWE blasted AEW in the press during WrestleMania week and maybe thinking how to spin this to its advantage. Punk even took to Instagram See, to post go. this right after AEW Dynamite. He definitely is just laughing about this. Next up, Tony Schiavone's reaction. Mm -hmm. How did Tony Schiavone feel about AEW airing the Punk footage? Or footage has surfaced showing Tony sitting at the announce desk and he doesn't look thrilled when AEW cut to the footage segment. He's definitely having some PTSD from those WCW days. Yeah. In fact, he did this same reaction at Bash at the Beach 2000. So you definitely know what he was thinking about this segment. Next up, WWE's reaction backstage to the CM Punk footage. Now there has been a recent update on what the WWE actually thought about the promo. This is thanks to Fightful Select who reported that within WWE there were plenty of people talking about the situation, but most we spoke to were exhausted after the insane WrestleMania week. We mm -hmm. heard no particularly surprised reactions or anything that happened that anyone didn't expect. CM Punk is not getting punished, scolded yeah. or anything of like within the company. There were a few wrestlers who considered the video of a cell phone and others who said that they simply didn't care and watching out of curiosity. They also mentioned that a wrestler who's been both in WWE and AEW said that there was no worse than anything that happened during the Monday Night War era. Next up, no, this was not a good idea. Yeah, bro, like, the fuck? WWE's doing some of their best, best numbers right now. Popularity-wise, show attendance-wise, like, they're doing some of the best stuff. Storyline-wise, they don't give a... They literally just came off of one of, if not, some would say their best WrestleMania of all time i don't think they're not worried about that they're worried about the future like, the fuck <laughs> that's just so idea dumb. if you consider social media as a valid measurement of public opinion it appears that many fans feel that it was a mistake to run this footage even fans claiming to be aew diehards seem to be confused as to what the purpose was to air the footage Facts. many of these comments discuss how the footage did nothing to dispute punk's account of things and while it seems to show punk being the aggressor punk never denied this yeah in fact even the live reaction from the crowd in aew had cm punk chance after it that's when you know that things couldn't be as bad as they could possibly be the day melts away on this decision to run the video i don't think it was a good idea i never did think it was a good idea but i thought look you got to give them the benefit of the doubt see what happens Meltzer pointed out how airing the footage quickly bit AEW in its backside. Here's the thing, later in the show when fans were chanting CM Punk, it was like, well, this one sure backfired. You don't want people chanting the name of someone from another promotion during your show. And sometimes it's going to happen and you just can't avoid it. But this was one you brought on yourselves. Next up, dark days ahead. Oh, 2024 man. was supposed to be the year that AEW turned things around and while AEW dug a huge hole for themselves thanks to its bad booking, the company's recent slew of signings of top free agents like Will Ospreay, Okada and Mercedes Monet suggested some hope. However, this footage flop just erased any goodwill AEW had with its fans and its locker room. AEW has dug a hole for itself it may not be able to escape from. Considering just how badly this has already turned out, one has to wonder if anything can be done to save AEW. And at one point, Shahid Khan takes the keys away from Tony Khan. Next up, Will Ospreay takes a shot at Triple H. Mm -hmm. Ironically, AEW's airing of the all-in footage occurred the same night as Will Ospreay showed how to roast the competition with a promo. Ospreay took time during his interview with Rene Packett to respond to Triple H's recent remarks that WWE doesn't want to hire wrestlers who aren't willing to endure the WWE grind. Helmsley didn't name names, but fans took his comments as a shot against wrestlers who claimed they had signed with AEW due to the lighter schedule. Osprey mm -hmm. told Renee, there's this rumor that I'm afraid of the grind, and I'll be honest, I have no idea where this conversation has come from, because I'm one of the only guys that are traveling every single week to the UK and America, eight, ten hour flights every single week, and I'm delivering one of the best professional wrestling matches this world has ever seen, brav. But he wasn't through though, and unloaded mm -hmm. with some haymakers. 
and normally I wouldn't rise to this type of bait, but seeing as the guy that said it is only in the position he's in because he was grinding on the boss's daughter, you're in no position to tell me what the grind is all about my friend, because you have no idea what I fight for, so let this be a painful jab back and a gentle reminder that you do not throw stones at an assassin with a machine gun. While fans differ on whether promotion should take TV or pay-per-view time to criticize the competition, Osprey's interview is an example of how to blast a rival in a way that exposes their weaknesses and plays to your strengths. That's something the CM Punk footage did neither of. Next up, William it was an entertaining segment, like an entertaining, uh, I guess you could say, uh, you know, promo that he was delivering. The only thing is, it's just the timing of it. It was just the timing of it because of the the whole CM Punk footage and it it just comes off as oh this is just a WWE we're mentioning WWE related wrestlers today on on tonight's show instead of talking about ours as much as possible we're gonna send jabs and mention them granted Triple H did you know say what he said and it was it was Triple H said it without saying it you know what I'm saying who it was but it, it kind of came off as the people that were recently signed with uh, WW, uh, with AEW. So people can easily put two and two together. So, I mean, it's fair game. If someone wants to say something, I know some people say, oh, there they go mentioning WWE. But this was a situation where, you know, he felt like, you know, he had to respond. And maybe this was a conversation they had behind the scenes who knows so i didn't have a problem with it i thought it was pretty pretty entertaining it's just the timing of it was bad if this was like the only little reference cool but even then you know it still kind of takes away from what he's trying to do you know what i'm saying like he could have alluded it like worded a little bit more where it fit into his upcoming match with um brian danielson you know he could have did something like that where it, it integrated into, you know, him building up the hype for that match with Brian Danielson. But it kind of was, I got to talk about this first. Now let me get to Brian Danielson. And it kind of kind of was disjointed. But overall, I didn't have a problem with it. It was entertaining for me, but it's just the timing of everything. Young Bucks and Will Ospreay opposed to the promos though. A new report suggests that the Bucks and Will Ospreay didn't come up with the idea for the respective promos against Punk and WWE, or rather Triple H. PW Torch's Wade Keller is reporting, regarding the Bucks, I've been checking with people in AEW and I've been told that this was not something that the Bucks were in favor of doing. It mm. wasn't their idea, it was Tony Khan's idea that he wanted this out there. As for Osprey, Keller commented, I'm also told that this was an idea presented to Osprey. I don't know about Osprey's enthusiasm for it or against it, but it wasn't something he did on his own. He didn't wing it, it was something that hours before the interview took place was proposed to him. That's what I'm hearing from AEW. While Keller's story hasn't been confirmed, it's not a good sign for AEW if it turns out to be true. Next up, yeah, AEW. Yeah, if it definitely turns out to be true, then it's like, you know, even if the wrestlers are not trying to, if you have the booker, the head guy in charge saying, hey, you should, I need you to do this. They got to fucking do it. So it's just like, I don't know, man. Don't know what, what Tony got going on over there. AEW looks to have regret this decision. Now it seems that AEW is making copyright infringement claims uh -huh. against anyone who airs the footage, including the MMA Hours, Ariel Helwani who tweeted, not very nice. Some lawyer out of Jacksonville got my account locked momentarily and DMCA'd the video I posted, which contained CCTV and interview footage from my uh -huh. show. Just felt like the CCTV needed some narration, you know? Anyway, here's Punk's seemingly very accurate PBP. Not only that, but they even cut the video out in their own video on YouTube. A video that has more dislikes than likes. Next up, a WWE... Yep. And that's one of the reasons why yesterday I did not put the video up here uh, on YouTube. Because I had a feeling they were going to be trying to strike people and take down the video of the stuff that they posted themselves. That's, that's the thing. Like, they posted it themselves and then was taking down the videos everywhere. As if they didn't want other people to see it, but you posted it. You hyped it up before the show, days before the show. Like, what do you thought was going to happen? Like, I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. Stars still not signed. Has Drew McIntyre signed a new deal with WWE? Well, not according to Fightful Select, which reports there are plans for McIntyre in the company and they plan on retaining him. It's believed that McIntyre is confident he can succeed wherever he works, but even though his contract is ending soon, they don't seem to think that McIntyre will leave. And finally, WWE doesn't. scaling back sets. 
Last but not least is the WWE changing up its sets for live events like Raw and SmackDown. That's a report coming from PWInsider.com saying, The SmackDown and Raw setup seen over WrestleMania weekend will be the norm going forward as a way oh, to wow. roll back certain aspects of production in favor of packing more fans into the arenas. Mm. Even MSG will feature the smaller production setup for the 28th June SmackDown taping. Wow. There may be exceptions to this, but this will be one of the changes as part of the Endeavor era. The WWE has been selling out many of its recent yeah. World Smackdown shows, so it's no surprise that Endeavor will want to maximize ticket uh -huh. sales, even if it means adjusting the show sets. But there you have it, folks. That's we'll look crazy, at bro. That's crazy. That's how big WWE is getting now, especially for the live attendants. They're selling out shows. Monday Night Raw had over 20,000 people in there. And I think SmackDown is potentially probably going to be sold out too this week. Which means they're going to adjust for the set to make it so people can, you know, fit more. They can fit more people in there. WWE, bro, they're banking right now, bro. I think it's like, is it like 17 consecutive shows of complete sellouts? Sellouts. 20,000 people on a Monday Night Raw is insanity, by the way. That's just crazy numbers. Good. That's a pay-per-view level number, so. Hey, man, WWE's cooking right now. But comment down below. Let me know how y'all feeling about this whole AEW releasing the footage uh, debacle. Because essentially, that's what it is on social media. How do y'all feel about it? Are you guys um, rocking with what Tony Khan did by dropping the footage? Or do you guys feel like it was a grave mistake? Um, let me know how y'all feeling about this. It's been a few hours since it's dropped. Um, so let me know what's your your thought process on this whole situation and did you guys enjoy aew dynamite last night also let me know as well but i appreciate all the love support road to 150k and i'm still gonna be the youtube rest of the champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace